In today's video, you guys are gonna be meeting Alicia and Jim. Those are our humans. They've brought their macaw today who's eating our seasonal feeding system and Zupreme pellets. She's only getting between 10 and 12 hours of sleep because of their work schedule. So about four days a week, it's only 10 hours. Now, they've only had this macaw for three months, so keep this in mind, and this macaw absolutely hates Jim. Oftentimes, this macaw gets so upset and redirects her aggression on Alicia. So when she gets really mad at Jim, she will actually turn and bite Alicia if she's on her. Now this bird is clipped, but she'll actually get on the ground and chase Jim around if she can. And when this happens, Jim either leaves or he tries to talk nicely to her and just be her friend because he just wants to be her friend so badly. Now this bird you're gonna see later in this video shows a lot of hormonal bonding to Alicia. Regurgitating, wants to be on her all day, tries to to nest in blankets, won't let anyone near her when she does get into blankets in their home. So we're dealing with definitely a one person bird in this video. I'm gonna show you some of the mistakes that were made throughout this video, like the fact that they use this really tall stand to train her. It's too tall for them to see proper body language responses to themselves. And it really gives this bird a lot of opportunity for what we call redirected aggression, where this bird is going to take its aggression out on this foraging tree. And that's really why we try to convince people to use our training stands. You can't have a bird that does redirected aggression. They won't get distracted and they're at the perfect tight to be able to properly read their body language responses to you. Can I see your treat sizes? Oh no, so. it all went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna show you what the proper treat size looks like. It is so important and so many people get this wrong and think that their bird isn't treat or food motivated when really their bird is just filling up insanely quickly. Their crop sizes are already small, so when you use large pieces of nut, they're done early. Instead of one rep, there's six reps. This she will train with, um, and I usually just give her a piece of it, whatever's okay. in there. So this is actually really interesting to keep keep note of. I don't know if you guys see it over here, but just like dried fruit in general. If you think about how much sugar is in a regular piece of papaya, mm -hmm. prior to being just dried out, all the sugar is there, but now it's concentrated more or less. Okay. And so instead of getting the water and everything else that's in the full size papaya, it's just basically like handing her a Skittle. And so if you're having like high energy problems, which I'm seeing high energy, yes. if you're having hormonal problems that could be off of sleep, but since sleep's pretty good, it lends me more towards diet. I probably would just take these off the table completely okay. for like ever. Come on, babes. Come on. Nice. Perfect. Yeah. She's just eyeing at you. Like, oh boy. Well, it reminds me of working with Harley. Yeah. Let's talk body language, holy eye pin. Eye pinning is when the pupil of the bird's eye dilates and goes big to small. So you can see the eye pinning, you can see the wing position here. The wings are held a little further out. The feathers on the head are raising up. This bird's focus is actually on Jim, who is the guy in the teal shirt. And you can see this bird is just 100% distracted by the presence of Jim and not responding to training. Also, when Jim moves, look at this body language. We get anxious flapping, she's anticipating. Now we have big macaw body language. Part cobra, what's happening? Yes, she hisses yeah, at him a lot. Holy, like, state of heightened, though, like, from the get-go. That was a lot of body language. Yeah. Um, all right, Jim, I want you to, I want to get you in that corner, and okay. I want to see if body language is different. So you'll still be visible. For the camera sake, so you guys know. Yeah, it's like she's looking your way. Can you pan over to see how far he is? <laughs> Poor Jim is in the, in the corner of the room. Oh, he looks so little over there. Your lighting might be bad there. It's okay. Okay. All right, so let's see if we can get a gentle target. Who the hell are you? 
you notice her effie feathers are like up on her mustache? So what you're about to see Dave do here is a really awesome trick that I want to share with you guys. He's asking for a target. He's not getting the response he wants. And if you don't get a response from a bird within just a few seconds, you really want to take away the opportunity and change something to actually be able to get that response. What Dave ends up changing is he goes to the other side of the bird and this just kind of refreshes or resets the whole scene. And now he asks for a target. He has the bird's attention and she's a lot more willing to participate. It's amazing how something as simple as just switching directions can completely change the bird's focus. So consider this next time you train. I think that you are the cue for heightened here. I think it's not only you, but I think it's also your uh, vocalizations. Just for giggles, take a step closer and talk to her as if you were going to do a training session and watch her posture. You ready to do some training? Uh, you ready you guys to do some see training? some of the posture changes? And then getting a vocalization, you can go and step back to. Um, so then getting the vocalization out of the bird, they usually vocalize at a heightened state of emotion. So we're getting the vocalization, the posturing just changed. Now I'd love to see if you and Jim switch spots. Okay. And I want to see what that looks like. Ooh. If I could fly. Where are you going? Okay, so let's just pause here for a second and see what happens. Funny. Yeah, I'm gonna try doing the exact same thing I just did. So you can see here, this macaw's body language, again, very puffed out. The wings are held away from the body just a little bit. All of this posturing is saying, I'm big, I'm intimidating, I'm trying to scare you off, I don't want to interact with you. And this is what Jim sees a lot. Can you see the poofiness? Right now, what I'm worried about is that behaviors have been trained, whether intentional or accident, I think that heightened has been paired with different behaviors or different interactions. Something we see a lot is when the bird refuses to step up, somebody either holds their hand there too long and ends up getting bit, or something like this happens where the bird asks for petting instead, and a lot of the times we will pet the bird instead of having it step up because it refused. So keep this in mind that you're not accidentally reinforcing the bird for not doing what you asked. And then like gets herself more and more worked up. And just like death grip. Huh. Yeah, so if I'm trying to get her down off of the top of her cage, she gets it. You could also lift that stand up to the other one. And I don't get the data. Okay. Just trying to save her hand. Why is she all eye contact you with me? Are you seeing it? Okay, girl. So pay attention to Dave moving, and when he does, this bird gets mad and redirects the aggression onto Alicia. That's why Alicia got bit. You could see earlier that she was not getting bit by just leaving her hand there when nothing was happening, but this time, because Dave moved, it made this bird feel like it didn't want that to happen, and so it got mad and redirected it at Alicia. Here, Dave just decides to try to have this macaw step up for him instead, and shockingly, um, I'm at a terrible angle, but shockingly, this bird actually steps up very nicely. He uses his other hand to just sort of misdirect the bird or get the birds at focus or attention upwards, and when the second bird comes out for the <laughs> class, you can see that it's flying around. We get a little bit nervous and we realize the macaw needs to be put in for the little bird's safety just so we don't have an, an accident where the bird ends up over by the macaw. As you can see from the heightened state of emotion with this macaw, with that eye pinning, that posturing, that is some serious posturing right there. That's a real challenge. And still refusing to step up for Alicia, demanding head scratches, just not coming down whatsoever, especially from this height. She's higher up now. Right. Your tail. 
So here we are for the second session, and I'm so impressed with how Alicia gets her macaw out each time. It's never forceful, it's never demanding, it's really on her macaw's terms, which is so impressive, and I wish everybody would take the time to do this. So I've sped this session up so that you guys can really see how much Alicia was struggling with getting a response from her macaw, and how much waiting around there is in classes, so I really try to speed that up for you guys so that you're not totally bored. But as you can see, we're just not getting any sort of of target training response to Alicia. So we've got to change something. Anytime the bird isn't giving you the response or reaction that you want, you've got to change something. Now this behavior and this body language is coming from Jim getting close and approaching and trying to get the same behavior through the target. And he actually gets it, but aggressively. Now here's what we changed. We actually asked for the targeting, but we have Alicia deliver the treat, and that's making this interaction a little bit more positive than just interacting with the male humans. Remember how I talked earlier about how sometimes some people leave their hand there too long and they eventually get bit asking for a step up? Well, the same thing can kind of happen in this context where Jim just keeps asking and asking and asking and asking, even though he's not getting a response and he's not really changing enough to get or warrant a better response. And so here's what he gets. Touch. So when she reaches, you can kind of like meet her. Lean in or lean away? Lean in. Okay. Touch. Oh. So the, the reason that we're putting so much emphasis on just a gentle touch mm -hmm. is because we don't want to pair, like I'm not going to pair that right there, but um, we don't want to pair heightened with, with anybody. Um, and so we can kind of retrain the training equals calm through, like I said, capturing those calm moments with a shake mm -hmm. or through a gentle target. She's definitely just super heightened. Yeah. So I think, I think although we could like find a couple of winning moments in today, the biggest thing is going to be fixing the diet and, and seeing if you can extend that sleep a little bit. All the things that could be leading towards hormones, really pay attention to those and see what you can modify. So hopefully you guys found this video to be a great example of what a heightened bird looks like, get to learn some macaw body language, see some major communication through feathers, posturing, all of the body language cues, and understand how important the foundations are. So we talk about it time and time again here on the Bird Tricks channel throughout our blogs, articles, websites, consults. The foundations are so important. The foundations are your bird's diet, your bird's sleep, and your bird's hormones. Those are the three things we consider to be in your foundations, which is why we cover them in our beginner course. Beginner doesn't mean you have zero experience. It just means this is where we start. We kind of have a checklist that we want to go off of to see why isn't your bird behaving the way you want it to, or why isn't your relationship with your bird where you want it to be? And this is kind of how we go through our checklist. And the beginner course is something I wish everybody would have because it goes over your foundations in depth and gets you on the right page so that you can then build an awesome relationship. If you haven't built a solid foundation, then every single thing that you try to do to create a good relationship tends to work for a temporary amount of time and then sort of fall through the cracks and not stick long-term. And as we all know, these birds are long-lived, so we wanna make it count. So check out my beginner course at birdtricks.com.